Give us your reaction to everything that just unfolded this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, a bit of a state of shock. Uh, you don't normally have a, a historic uh, norm. Uh, no speaker uh, in, uh, in history has been removed by a motion to vacate. Uh, and so we just watched that happen in real time just moments ago. Uh, I feel a little bit like what I saw on the floor of the, the House, which were a lot of members just looking shocked. Uh, you know, it, 210 people voted for uh, Speaker McCarthy to stay in the chair and and they don't they no longer have a, a speaker now. And they're going to they're the, the moment is now beginning where they're starting to think through what happens next. And I promise you, not one of those people were sitting around today thinking that that McCarthy might lose this vote. They were hopeful. Uh, and they were working it hard uh, for McCarthy to retain the speakership. Uh, a lot was at stake. And the fact that that didn't happen uh, is going to leave a lot of the leadership in, in shock. Uh, you saw uh, Congressman Patrick McHenry uh, be placed in as the temporary speaker. And when he gaveled uh, the House at, into recess for a moment, he, he hit that thing so hard, I thought the entire chamber would shake. Uh, there's a lot of emotion on the floor of the House of Representatives right now. Well, there sure is. Rick, we were on Bloomberg Radio together when we learned that Hakeem Jeffries had decided to tell Democrats to not move in the defense of Kevin McCarthy. Was that the moment this whole thing turned? Yeah, I think that it might have been known to Kevin McCarthy that that was going to happen after his conversation earlier this week with, with Hakeem Jeffries. I think it was one of these things where Jeffries said publicly, I'm not going to do anything for this guy unless he asks me. And and Kevin McCarthy's attitude was, I'm not going to ask Democrats to vote for me, but they can vote their conscience. Well, that's not how the House of Representatives works, Mr. Speaker. I mean, you you know better than that. You needed to have a deal coming out of there to have this the the uh, 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 Congressman uh, Jeffries, uh, 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 you know, get something for the support. Uh, I think this could have been easily avoidable. Uh, I, I don't know if it was hubris or stubbornness. But Kevin McCarthy uh, chose not to cut a deal with Democrats and, and, and have a coalition of like-minded people trying to govern uh, and instead fell prey to Matt Gaetz and, 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 a, and a bunch of fringe players on the Republican Party. If he cut a deal with Democrats, though, wouldn't those voices on the right just grow louder and larger? I, we should note to our viewers, let's just play what House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries had to say earlier. This was before the, moat, the vote about the situation. In the chaos, in the dysfunction, in the extremism, we are ready, willing, and able to work together with our Republican colleagues, but it is on them to join us to move the Congress and the country forward. So clearly, Rick, Hakeem Jeffries wanted something substantial, almost as you're talking about changes of rules, potentially more Democrats on committees. Wouldn't that give too much away where Republicans would go very uneasy with Kevin McCarthy? Well, first of all, I think Kevin McCarthy has a very strong group of uh, 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 House Republicans who are for him pretty much however he would like to govern, right? We, you, we are talking about a fringe group, the Freedom Caucus of no more than 30, probably 20 who um, have caused what we have today is uh, most of the problems, and, and including Matt Gates, who is not even in the Freedom Caucus, is 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 really the henchman at today's um, political assassination. And so um, uh, I, I keep telling House members one thing that that you see in polling over and over and over again. Yeah, sure, you know, uh, people who are Republican want what we have to sell, and same for Democrats. But all of them, to an individual want Congress to actually do something. It does no good to pass bills that don't become law. Uh, it does no good to wrestle and process all day today when government funding is at stake. If, if Kevin McCarthy had chosen to govern as a, a coalition government, one thing was certain, everything they passed would become law because it would be for certain signable by the president of the United States and passable in the United States Senate. So it would not be a waste of time to be on the floor of the House of Representatives like it's been for the last year. And and yeah. and yeah. your ruling coalition would be 400 people. It wouldn't be 10. Mm -hmm. And so who wants to govern for 10 people? And so I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, I look at this as a student of politics and I and I scratch my head and I'm like, what am I missing? Uh, 
Would you rather be in charge of the House of Representatives and getting things done or now fighting for a job that you were just kicked out of? Well, so then it becomes a conversation of, you know, if not Kevin McCarthy, then who? And I know you've weighed in on this before, Rick. It's a pretty short list of folks who could get to 218. You were with us uh, on the balcony last evening on Capitol Hill when we asked Republican Congressman Jim Jordan about this, an ally of Kevin McCarthy. He doesn't want the job. Listen to how he put it. I don't want to be speaker. I want, I want Kevin McCarthy to be speaker. I want to focus on the job What if you have. were asked to serve your country in that role? Well, I want to focus on the, the job I have. I think I'm serving the folks in the 4th District of Ohio. That's my main uh, job, is to do, do what I told them I was going to do when they gave me the privilege to represent them. Rick, Steve Scalise is uh, being treated for cancer. I don't know how many folks, maybe you have uh, an idea about Patrick McHenry. Can he stay in this job? You know, look, I mean, if I were picking a dark horse, I would say Patrick McHenry. He was the chief whip for Kevin McCarthy on that notorious 15-round uh, match mm. that, that got Kevin selected as speaker. Uh, he has distinguished himself as really the, the key uh, operator behind um, uh, uh, the, the speaker, Kevin McCarthy's uh, leadership right now. Uh, Tom Emmer, uh, really well thought of individual in the leadership also. Uh, and I'm sure there are other dark horses. I would say Jim Jordan's comments to you yesterday were a total fact yesterday. There's a new fact that actually is more important than what he said, uh, and that is that Kevin McCarthy is no longer speaker. And so anybody who said that they supported Kevin McCarthy for speaker, uh, that vote has just concluded and he lost. And so it's really up to Kevin McCarthy right now. Do you want to be nominated to try another run for speaker? where you think you can get more than 210 votes next time, or do you open it up to somebody else to be nominated and see how their luck fares? Um, uh, th th this is really the biggest question on the floor of the House of Representatives right now.